ruler who just loved to sing. And he was a very happy BC ruler because singing was making him lots of money. He thought he was a millionaire. Folks, I was that BC ruler. And for the past 25 years, I've been trying to find out where my money is, what's happened to that money. Where is my money? Where's my fucking money? Uh, where's my fucking money? Where's my fucking money? Where's my fucking money? Where's my money, you Where's my money? There was a time in the 70s when the Bay City Rollers were the biggest band in the world. They were bigger than Bowie, bigger even than the Beatles. The five Scottish lads with a love of tartan sold more than 120 million records and topped the charts of every record-selling country in the world, generating an industry worth over five billion pounds in today's money. The Rollers were set to become multi-millionaires, but by 1979, in what is one of the biggest rock and roll rip-offs ever, their entire fortunes disappeared. Lead singer Les McEwen would never get to see the millions he earned during his time with the Rollers. How much money should I have? Quite a lot. I don't, I probably should have 10, 15, 20, I don't, millions. I felt like crap, I felt horrible, I felt stupid, I felt ripped off. Who would you feel like if you had been a part of a band like that that had made millions of records? and you were told you're a millionaire and these people trust us, we'll look after it, don't worry, it's all, it's all protected. Lawyers, you're safe as houses. But whatever they did, they did it right, and uh, unbeknownst to us, we kind of cooperated in our own rip-off. Today, the luxury lifestyle is gone, and instead of a pop star mansion, Les lives in a small flat in the east end of London. Hey, hey, hey. All right, man, yeah, how you doing, yeah, all right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Hello. Hi, boss. Um, I'd like a bottle of wild turkey, please. Yeah. To quench my desire. And uh, can I pay you next Thursday? No, next Thursday. Joking. <laughs> uh, when the millions were made and lost back in the 70s, the Bay City Rollers were managed by Tam Payton. Today, multi-millionaire Tam, who made his fortune from property investment, lives in isolated splendor on the outskirts of Edinburgh, protected by spiked gates barbed wire, security cameras, and guard dogs. Really, the rollers are a thing of the past to me. I think it's like a, you know, something that festers all the time. And, uh, I mean, I've got a lot more in my life of interest now than the basic rollers. I don't have any doubt that the band was ripped off. I mean, I don't think I have any doubt the band was ripped off. I don't think any of the members of the band ripped anybody off. And I certainly didn't rip them off. Not only do the band think they were ripped off back in the 70s, they believe they're still being ripped off today. Despite millions of Rollers albums being continually sold around the world, the band's record company, Arista Records, haven't paid them any money from record sales for the past 25 years. Hello and welcome to Shangalang. Which roughly translated means the Bay City Roars. Which means us, I'm Derek. And I'm Eric. And I'm Leslie Richard McEwen. And I'm Alan. Come on, would you introduce yourself? <laughs> I mean, you've got to do better than that. This is TV. I've got all these gold and platinum discs in my house. I keep them in the attic. I can't put them on show because if I look at them, it kind of annoys me a wee bit. Because you've got these millions of record sales. Where's that dosh?
I've had two heart attacks and had a slight stroke. True, probably stress through uh, what's happening with the, the, the record company. What's happening is, I mean, how am I going to live for the next whatever, you know? I mean, I thought I wouldn't need to worry about pensions or things because I thought the money would be there all the time. And even that was way back in when I was uh, in the 20s. I actually tried to get a lawyer and I tried to get my own accountant and all hell broke loose. What are you trying to do? You're trying to fuck everything up. If somebody from the outside comes in and sees what we are doing, and of course what we're doing is not completely illegal, but if somebody from the outside comes in and starts sniffing around, you're going to upset the whole apple cart and it could all just come tumbling down around us. Uh, and that's when I start to think, God, I'm, I'm fucked. <laughs> I'd like any one of them to come out and say that I've ever fiddled them out of money. And I would sue them, seriously. You know? If they like to sit down with me sometime, I'll go into it in detail with them. They don't have to be frightened for me. I won't smack them. <laughs> the band wouldn't say boo to a goose. Tam controlled them completely. He controlled the interviews. Except for Les. Les was different. He had a a pop star image. The others didn't. Tam was a Svengali. He, he collected them up like little school children and took them away and God knows what he did. I think that Tam should be shot, uh, the way he managed them, really. It's disgraceful. Is this all of you? Fine, fine. Is your, is your manager with you? That's me here. I didn't realise at the time the way he was sort of crushing our self-esteem. We thought it was, well, I thought it was a matter of economics that we shared rooms, so two people would be in one room, two people like that. Even when we got more famous and we had enough money to have our own room, he still kept that going. Tam controlled the band through fear and intimidation. Everybody listened to him. He was the boss and you, you didn't sort of really talk back to him and things, so you might, you know run the risk of getting a slap, you know. I feel I've done quite well for myself. I don't feel that I need anything from the base it was. In fact, all I really want to do is forget that they were ever around. Um, 1986, I think it was the last time I saw Tam Payton. I'd, my dad took me out in his old beat-up Volvo and... Um, the gates open, Tam Paintings walked to, his dogs beside them and all that stuff. And, uh, oh, well, it's great to see you. How you been? What's your dad doing out there? I was asking him to come in. Didn't he want a man standing out there? So the dad's walked in. As soon as my dad's crossed the threshold, two dogs attacked my dad. Tam Payton turns around to me and says, Oh, it's an awfully dangerous world, Les. Look at that, just out of the blue. Something can happen to your parents. And that's the last time I ever saw him. And I've been worried all these years that he might do something to my mum and dad. Well, he can't do nothing now.